Welcome to this module of Professor Messer's free CompTIA A plus certification training course. I'm James Messer, and in this module, we're going to talk about optimizing and upgrading your laptops and portable devices. I'm going to step you through quite a bit in this module where we're going to discuss things from our requirements of 220-601 exam. This is our Essentials exam, section 2.2, where we need to install, configure, optimize, and upgrade laptops and portable devices. Interestingly enough, it's exactly the same words that are used in the 220-602 requirements for the technician exam. And it's even the same section number. It's just the technician exam tends to go into more detail about these. So we're going to also provide you with a lot of detail here, not only in power type issues like ACPI, but we're going to talk about what you should think about when you're removing hardware, installing memory, PCI cards, and portable hard drives inside of these devices. And I'm going to step you through doing all of that in this module. Let's first talk about ACPI. This stands for the Advanced Configuration and Power Interface Standard. And this is an open standard in the industry. Almost everybody is using this, regardless of operating systems, regardless of the hardware that happens to be in use, because it's an extremely functional standard that allows you first to manage the power that's being used in your devices, whether they're portable or otherwise. Also gives you specific configuration functionality in being able to manage this for the power interfaces and some of the advanced configurations. You don't usually see this on personal digital assistants. This is something that's generally used on laptops and used on desktops, but very rarely on these very customized handheld devices. Let's talk about the ACPI standard as it applies to standby, suspend, and hibernate. These are terms that you're going to hear a lot, especially as you work with laptops. First, let's talk about standby, something called power on standby, which means that we're going to put this system into a standby mode. It's not going to be operational. This is something you do. You're ready to leave work, but you need to be able to start up quickly when you get home. You close your laptop up, or you tell your laptop to go into standby mode. What this does, it halts the operation of your laptop. It also keeps the power going to your CPU and to the memory inside of your computer so that it keeps this sort of warm type state going. It doesn't actually completely turn itself off. It still keeps your CPU running. So all the registers that are in your CPU are there exactly as you had them when you told it to stop what it was doing. If you go into something called a suspend mode, it's a little bit different. It only keeps power on the memory. It essentially finishes up all of its calculations in the CPU and gets rid of everything that's pending for any type of CPU fu function but it keeps what's in your memory ready to go. It's also a very quick way to restore, to shut down a system quickly and restore it quickly. It's just a different way of doing it. And both of these are relatively quick in how quickly you can start it back up again once you've put it into this mode. One that does take a little bit of time once you come out of this mode and really to go into this mode as well, something called Hibernate. What it does is take everything that's in your memory and it stores it all to disk everything. It puts it on a part of your hard drive, just stores it onto a file. And so that takes some time. If you've got a lot of memory, especially, it takes a while while it stores these 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig of memory, whatever you have, it stores everything out on your hard drive. So you may have to first have to make sure you have hard drive space for this. But what's nice about this, it uses no power. Once it is saved to disk, you close it up, it's not using any of your battery to maintain any type of state. So this is good if you need to travel for a long period of time. You're not going to go back to your computer for a while. When you open your computer up and turn on the power again, it's going to take a while as it reads everything back from the hard drive. But then everything gets back and put in the way that it was. And it's relatively quick. Certainly, it's usually much quicker than restarting your laptop and booting up from scratch again. So those are the three things you'll see talked about in the exam. And as you use your portable devices, standby, suspend, and hibernate. When you're working with portable devices, you're also going to be adding hardware, removing hardware. You're going to be doing a lot of different things with the components. And most of the external components on laptops and portable devices are hot pluggable, which means as it's powered on, you can simply plug these devices right into it without powering it off, plugging the device in and powering it back on again. And usually this is done through those adapter card settings uh, from a PC card, a card bus, or an express card basis. And those are those standardized expansion slots that are in the side of your laptops. But you also have some standardized ports that might be on your laptops, things like USB and FireWire. Those are very common to see. And again, you can plug right into those as the device is turned on. Finally, video. You almost always have a video output on your portable devices. And the video is also 
one that you're able to plug into without powering things back down and just allows you to extend the capabilities of that portable device. You may be called on to extend the capabilities of your portable devices, for instance, to install memory inside of a laptop. With these laptops, you'll find that most of the things that you need to get to, memory, expansion slots on the internal side, are usually accessible from a panel that's on the bottom. So all you need to do is really unscrew one or two screws, and the panel just pops right out. It gives you easy access to those slots. This is exactly the same type of requirements as any other type of memory installation. You want to make sure it's not powered up. You want to be sure there's no static. Uh, you have your static strap on. Everything that you would normally do. This is nothing different. This is the empty slot you would find on, for instance, the bottom of a laptop. This is for the expansion slot, the mini PCI slot that's in the bottom of a mini laptops. And here is the memory card slot that's available on a laptop. We can see it there. It's empty right now. We want to put some memory into it. So what we do is, now that we have that off, this is turned on its side now, we would slide the memory very much like the way you would do it on a desktop computer. You slide it into the slot and make sure that you're all the way in, that nothing is sticking out of that. You'll notice there is a, a an indention here so that you can't put the memory in backwards or the wrong way. It has to slide in there, and that little notch ensures that you're going to make sure it goes in the right way. This, Once you have this in place, you simply push it down, and it snaps on these little latches that are on the edges. And now it stays in place, which is good because laptops usually get thrown around quite a bit. To remove this memory, you simply pull along the side of this, and it pops right back out again. Very easy to do. And once it's in place, this is exactly how it looks on there. Very simple to put memory into a device. In fact, on laptops, it's often simpler than doing it on a desktop because you don't have to take the whole thing apart. Installing mini PCI adapters is almost exactly the same situation. It's usually behind a panel. And you can see here we've got an empty mini PCI slot. Let's say that we'd like to add wireless capabilities to this laptop. It's already designed for wireless. There's even the, adapt, the, um, the uh, an antenna wires that are ready to go. And those wires run all the way up into the top of the laptop into the screen itself. All we have to do is apply the card. So we put the card in almost exactly the way we slid the memory in. And of course, we've got those little marks here. So we can't accidentally put memory in the slot. And we can't accidentally put in this card the wrong way. This is a wireless card that you simply slide in and you push down. Once you push it down, it also snaps into place. And on this card, we even have a place to plug in our antenna wires. You can see our main wire and our auxiliary wire are here. And they're marked that way on the wires themselves. If you're unsure, you can always look at your manufacturer's documentation. They'll certainly tell you what wire goes to what. Whenever you're upgrading hard drives inside of your, your laptops, you need to think about a little bit extra here because the drive types may be different depending on the laptop you're using. If you're interested in knowing more about these drive types, we have another module of our free training that talks about these drive types. Inside of a laptop, it's the same drive type. They're just smaller drives. There's an ATA or an Ultra ATA type. There is a SATA drive that might run at 1.5 gigabit and a SATA drive format at 3.0 gigabit. They're just a form factor that fits inside of laptops. The hard drive is usually accessible on the side. It usually pops right out. Often you've, you'll find really technical people might have multiple hard drives, and they just slide them in and out depending on what they'd like to do. If a hard drive is accessible easily on the side that simply slides in and out of the side of the computer, it becomes very easy to, to replace. You pull it out. you. We put the new one in, slide it back onto the laptop. I wanted to give you an example of doing one that is a little bit more difficult. It's actually underneath this bottom panel of this laptop that's here. Uh, before you do anything with changing out a hard drive, with changing out memory or anything else, you want to make sure to remove that battery and any type of power connection. So this is exactly like doing it on a desktop system. Once we have removed the battery, we can unscrew all of the screws here on the bottom that will release this bottom panel. Once we remove that panel, we have access to everything that's on the inside of this laptop. You can see there's a lot here. There is a, a video card that's got a heat sink going right to it, probably because that video card gets very warm. Here's the memory that we've got, two memory modules inside of there. There's an existing hard drive already in this laptop. And there's even a number of wireless and mobile expansion cards inside of the system. What we want to do is add a new hard drive into this second hard drive bay that's inside of this laptop. And it's exactly the same as the one that's in the other drive bay. And what we usually get from the laptop manufacturers is a specialized hard drive carriage just for that laptop. So almost every laptop has one of these. You very rarely find one that you simply plug in the normal hard drive without anything that goes around it. 
This is a SATA drive that's going to plug into this carrier. And you can see they even include the screws that you're going to need. So your first step is to actually fasten the drive onto the carrier. Really, it can only go in one way. It's very, very easy to see the way that would work. And we can see that now that we're screwed those in, we've got the extra screws that are going to put it right onto the system itself. So we've got this open drive bay. All we're going to do is simply, in this case, lay the drive right on top of it. It, it snaps on or fits on to that card. And then we've got these four screw points that we're going to want to add the screws to inside of our system. And once those are screwed in, we can put our back panel back on and start the system back up again. So the process is very simple to go back and forth. We add our our battery back into this, and now we've got a new drive in the system. It's not very complicated at all. You do want to be careful when working inside of these laptops. You keep track of all the screws, but generally that's the hardest thing you'd ever have to worry about when replacing memory, when doing anything with the expansion mini PCI slots, or anything with the hard drives inside of these laptop systems. In review, we've looked at our advanced configuration and power interface inside of our portable devices. And we've talked about removing and replacing hardware, specifically the memory, the mini PCI adapter cards. And finally, we looked at how to upgrade and replace a portable hard drive inside of our laptops. For more free videos, to participate in our message boards, and much more, you can visit our website, freeaplus.com.